Recording. Uh, greetings, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, welcome to our April event. We're glad that you could make it here today. We're excited that this is our last event of this year, this season. Um, everyone should have a the handouts. I just want to mention the handouts. Um, the agenda, and then we have a call for nominations for ASSC uh, membership, understanding service, the, the service project form, and then the green evaluation sheet. So I just want to take a minute to welcome everybody, and um, the, per the agenda, I'm going to adjust a little bit because I have to leave early, so I'm going to go first. <laughs> so. Um, Nora's going to come up and explain uh, about the service project, and then we'll have the year in review. And then uh, Ms. Lakia, is Ms. Lakia Wilson here? She's on her way. Oh, okay. I just heard. So I'm that's good that we're in for you. Yeah. Um, so then we'll have a year in review, and then um, Ms. Lakia Wilson. Um, Michelle's going to talk about what service and why it's important in question and answer. So I really appreciate everyone coming and enjoying your lunch today. So Nora's going to come and talk, explain a little bit about the service project. Hello everyone. I'm Nora Al Husseini. I'm an academic advisor over at Biology and I serve as a member at large. Um, basically, our sp um, spring service project, we are only focusing on two schools. Um, we have Lakita Wilson, who is the exec executive vice president um, from the Detroit Federation of Teachers, who will be speaking a bit about their union as teachers and talking about the supply list that we have and the kind of donation they want to focus on this year. It's a bit different from last year. Um, we're focusing on middle school and they need kind of more than just school supplies, um, but Lakita will talk about that a little bit. Um, I do have a sign-up sheet. Um, anybody that would like to do this, it's at the front of the table, so you can just put your name on contact number if you want to participate. But basically what we're doing is you leave a box in your office, um, ask around who can donate, and we do have a list of these supplies that we do need. Um, and then when you're all set around August 16 is when we like to collect everything and send them off to the two schools. Um, you can drop the box off at our union um, office and I do have the address and contact information, everything in the um, handout sheet that we did for the supplies at the bottom. But um, We're still waiting on Lakita, she's on her way, so we're hoping she gets here after the two presentations from Michelle and um, Cynthia. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nora. So I'm just going to, um, how many have attended majority of the ASSC events? Okay. So this is good that we're going to review the entire year. So um, just to mention our, the committee for this year, sorry for the long Um the committee for this year, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the chair, Marissa Henderson, is, she's the co-chair, so she will be taking the reign for next year. Um, uh, Tanisha Watkins, she was not able, she may come, but she was not able to attend today. She's the secretary. And then we have members at large, Josie Hayek, and of course, Nora Alvesay. So that, that's our committee for, for this year. So um, what the ASSC does, we put on events and workshops in relation to, um, <laughs> uh, in relation to um, employment here, promotion, um, professional records, things like that. So we'll kind of see this. So the first session we went, the committee met, and we met, we determined all of the sessions ahead of, kind of ahead of time. Some were from last year, many of them were from last year but a couple were new. So the first one was uh, uh, best in October, we start the sessions, and the session title was best practices for the professional record. So what this focused on was an overview 
of the professional record and what it is, um, the creation and construction, how to format a professional record, and this was a round table kind of um, format where we had round tables and each person at the, at the uh, table, we had a seasoned staff person at each table with other staff so you can kind of get that more um, intimate look at your professional record. Uh, and then there, there were opportunities for suggestions. The evaluations for this session um, were mostly strong and agreed and some feedback on this session was it was great, it was helpful, we learned something new, it was a good format, and it was excellent. The next session in, uh, in November was professional development for the, prof the um, professional record, which this was a presentation from seasoned staff members. Uh, the focus was, was on the types of professional activities or professional development activities that you can do, why it was important, and then examples were shared on the activities that were suitable or appropriate. Um, this, the evaluations for this were mostly strong and agreed. Um, comments included there were the present presenters were good, they were great, thank yous, um, <coughs> some additional feedback. The slides were needed to needing to be larger. There was exchange of professional records and review with partners. That was for that was a good comment. And then the difference, the difference for brand new staff, which we've talked about that as a committee and overall that kind of thread throughout the the, the sessions about having something for specifically geared and targeted for new members, new staff members. So that's, we're going to see that all along. The January session was for employment security and promotion. And again, this was a presence, it was a combination of a presentation and a panel. Um, the evaluations for this, um, the focus on how to acquire uh, ESS and promotion and why that's important. I think the important part is to maintain staff here. Suggestions and tips were shared as well. The evaluations deemed very strong agreements and agree, one agreement was one unsure. The comments included, um, it was extremely helpful, it was great and thorough, enlightening, and the best presentation, it was honest and strong, um, engaging, and gave good advice. Other feedback was uh, staff seeking ESS and promotion should bring their pack, should put their packets together ahead of time, I think that's what that meant, um, with staff for feedback suggestions for it early. We have mentioned this too, um, suggestions to have it earlier, have this particular particular session earlier. Um, this this format, this round, this is a suggestion for like a round table format, um, because we did a round table format in the previous session, but this is a suggestion to have. This is a round table format as well. Um, the departments have different due dates for promotion and when when their committees meet and then um, there's a there's a need for collaboration between like the HR individual HR departments in each area in each unit the February session was annual review and select salary and so this again was a presentation and a panel, a presentation format and a panel. The there was a question and answer format. So we took questions from the individuals, participants that attended and, and answered and focused on what select salary and annual review is, um, the differences between those two, 
and why it's important. Now, this session bared the most comments. So, of course, people strongly agreed and agreed. Um, there were a few who disagreed or who were unsure. But this session bared the most written comments. And so those include, we appreciate the time, the overview was helpful, excellent, and valuable, and of course, always, there's nice food, um, if the handouts were helpful, and then additional comments included, it needed to be a di more diversity and representation from the different departments, a breakdown process of, the breakdown process of between the different units, um, especially, again, for new hires, um, electronic resources, someone put electronic resources, well, I think they mean online, website online, so Michael um, Sampson is very good about posting the PowerPoints online or whatever, filming these, um, more, more organ organization needed, um, advanced notice for the questions, having, the, having a notice about what question you want beforehand, I think that's what that meant, and then text message format. Which I don't know how we do that. Get the clicker. We can get some clickers like we do in the classroom. The March session included um, acronyms and what they all mean. And this was a, a tag team kind of format where we hand the baton to the next person who was presenting. So it's kind of like a rapid presentation kind of thing. Um, the focus was on a, an explanation of what each organization or each committee did, clarifying those acronyms, what do they mean, um, what do they stand for, what each does, and who it serves, and then opportunities to join and support those different areas, those different organizations. Comments included mostly, they were all strong and agreed. Of course, once again, the food, people love the food, <laughs> great presentation, good information on breaking down, kudos, outstanding, this was the favorite presentation for someone, great presenters, format was good, very informative, valuable, and excellent. Uh, separating, another comment, <coughs> separating the academic advisor, um, having that as a separate event, I, mean, I think that what that meant was having as a separate um, explanation of for advisors, which could um, be a collaboration opportunity. And then I, <coughs> September and December were the September event was um, our welcome back. So we didn't have any uh, any evaluations for these two, two months, but. The September is usually our welcome back recognition for those obtaining ESS or getting a promotion. And then the December um, is, the December event is a holiday meet and greet party. It was the first time we had it at Union. How many attended that event? That was the first time we did it at Union Street, which is here in Detroit. And then that was well, well attended in lieu of it being on the same day as the president's party. So we're happy about that. So that is it. I just want to take an opportunity to give a hand, let's give a hand to all our presenters throughout the season. <laughs> I want to personally offer my kind of ending talk. Um, I want to thank those who offered support for me and encouraged me with words to help me stay here, to help me do a good job. Sorry. This has been a challenge and a joy. It's a learn has been a learning experience for me. And I really appreciate those who truly stood by me um, as chair and as an academic staff member. Um, I'm hopeful that as a committee, 
Um, this has been helpful and it's been ass uh, to assist you all, academic staff, in these processes and therefore maintain, keep, and build up faculty and staff here in their career and their livelihood here as a professional at Wayne State. I will continue to stand for this union, to support this union, and to support those who are in this union, and to do what's fair, what's just, what's equitable, and what's right. Thank you. I want to say um, an honorary thank you to Sarah Doyle. She's not here. She was the chair before, so she helped me a lot. I want to say an honorary thank you to Dawn Nieder Miller. She helped, helped a lot with the presentation. This was her presentation, really, um, her idea. And I just want to thank all of those committee members who supported me, um, Nora, Tanisha, Marissa, and Josie. A special thank you to Michelle, Mark, Charlie, <laughs> and of course, Tammy. So I'm sorry I'm emotional, but I don't know if you guys know stuff, but I am an emotional person, but I really want to say thank you to, to all those who did support me um, during this year and during this um, season as chair, and because this is my last time. So thank you so much, and um, we will have Michelle next. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> I really admire Cynthia hanging in there and um, doing this this year. Um, uh, and I, the union is all about helping people, um, you know, when there's uh, challenges or adversity, trying to give people a chance to um, rise, uh, uh, to to uh, meet expectations and and to um, to keep going. And uh, Cynthia really did that. Cynthia, um, I, I'm, I'm really uh, appreciative. She's, um, she's a badass. Sorry. <laughs> and I mean that in the best, in the best of ways. She's uh, tough, um, hangs in there. So thank you, Cynthia. Um, all right, so um, we're still waiting for the Kia, and I worry because she's not familiar with campus that she's probably over in like the School of Medicine or something. Um, so I've been 35. She said she'd be here at 1235. So she's 1235, so I've got five minutes to talk. So that's good. So everybody um, should have this outstanding service or uh, uh, little flyer here. This comes from the Provost guidelines uh, for evaluation, such like a salary evaluation for um, academic staff, which um, Ricardo and Barbara and Charlie and I took a lead on uh, uh, having some input on it a few years ago. So it, it is developed by the provost, these out, this outline, but we also, uh, the union approves of these and thinks that they're, um, they're uh, good. And so uh, most people know this. How many people have engaged in service this year? How many people have engaged in service of the community? A professional or service of the university? And you know the difference? Yeah? Okay. How about professional service? Okay. So less professional service, more a lot of the community. I know the university offers a lot of opportunities. Anybody want to give me some examples of what you did for service to the community? Yeah, Kim. So this year, um, for my daughter's school, I hosted a science night. And as a science advisor, it was related to what I did. So I brought in a bunch of my research students hold events done. Niedermiller and her husband came and represented Wayne State for physics and geology. And so it was geared towards elementary students, but we had different experiments set up. <laughs> Asked all my students to wear we could make gear. We had a lot of Wayne State kind of freebie things. That's really cool. And so it was, you know, part of my science and I engaged my research students so that they could get out and teach science to elementary students as well as promoting Wayne State in Royal Oak where we don't get a tremendous group of high school students. That's awesome. That's very cool. Any other? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, the event that Kim organized was it was awesome. 
Yeah. So many kids, I mean, they were just, you know, their eyes just like, wow. Yeah. You know, they were just so excited when they went table to table. It and was even really, an ice storm. Yeah. It was the night we had a bad ice storm, and the students still <laughs> came. came. And, like, the families came, my undergrad students came, done and done. Right. So it was really right. nice. So it provides the service of the community provides a name of good activities that you provide to the to the community, um, and it also you know so it, it, you're representing the university in a professional manner, but also in sort of a non-traditional not like just undergraduate or graduate students you're reaching out beyond in, into different areas. Anybody else have a service project they want to brag about or talk about that you did? Well, what I used to do, when I was working with the Labor Study Center, I would do um, work with different groups. I would do a lot of training on, on medical leaves and family leaves, so I would work with uh, parents of kids with disabilities and explain to them what their rights were on their job, because they might not have a union, they might not know about these things, so I would, and that would count as service um, to the community. So it was in my professional job, but it was also, in a, I would, came out as Wayne State, and, um, and I was doing things that I could put my heart into and do good stuff. So, and what's and so there's service to the university. What kind of service to the university have people done? Any ideas? Any examples? To the university, I believe. Help with graduation. Help with graduation. Or the pancake breakfast. Pancake breakfast. So focusing on that. How many been on a, on a P, uh, an ESS promotion committee? That's service to the university. How many people have been? Um, I don't know. Any other committees that you have? Like a scholarship committees, things, oh, committees that are internal into the organism, into the um, university. Those can also be service, considered service to the university. AAUP activities. AAUP, thank you. And so the union, specifically, when you review, and hopefully we get some nominations for the uh, AAU, um, for the academic uh, staff steering committee next year, that is considered uh, service to the university, or professional service. Oh, I should know this, shouldn't I? No, service to the service. university. Service to the university, because it's considered professional participation in the university. All right, and then there's professional service. Any examples of professional service people know about that you've been involved with? I was on the Nakata Planning Committee. So, the Nakata Planning Committee. So any of those organizations, advisory committees for professional organizations? I know a lot of people raise their hands. What are some other examples? Yeah. Uh, like a manuscript review, article review. And so you reviewed articles for yeah. your professional organization? Yep. Yeah. That's good. Excellent. So those are all things. And what, what I think is incredibly, you know, I came to the university after working out, not in the university setting for years, that this is actually part of your expectations of your job. You're expected to provide service. So um, when you're evaluated, you know that it's, it doesn't always count. It doesn't count as much as professional or job duties. And, or a professional achievement, but it does count um, towards your university, and you should be expected to do, you are expected to do this kind of work. And I think it's great to have a job where community, where the service is part of your exp job expectations. I think that's a pretty awesome thing. Um, so on here you'll see how, how it's evaluated. I won't necessarily read it to you, but the more you do, the, the more, um, uh, the higher you get on your selected salary, one being the highest. It only goes to three when it comes to service, one, two, or three. Um, so, so we're going to be talking about this service project. So if you sign up to actually um, provide a box, do this sort of thing in, in your workplace and collect, that is, could be considered, I think, service to the university. <coughs> no, service to the community. Service to the community. So, but if you go out and do um, connect with the the middle school students, if you wanted to go beyond and connect with people in the schools, both at Burton and um, Golightly, which are very close to the university, if you wanted to go and meet with those teachers and give uh, some advice around um, going to college to the kids there, that would be considered um, also service to the community. So it's all service to the community. So because if you ran for the ASSC, that would be service to the university. Yeah. Because it's selective salary season and we just finished promotion season with uh -huh. um, several candidates, there's several of us who've served on that university level committee. Some of the conversations that we have every year, but came up again this year, um, especially for the newer folks. We've got these different categories under service, 
and there's often confusion about, well, is it just as we're yeah, yeah, just is it service confusing. the profession, is it service the community, is it the department, or the university, or a division? Those places are categorized on your professional record. The simple answers are, one, you don't have to check off all those boxes, although sometimes that's a perception that is, is, is out there. Um, it's good to find out, as we've said before, in your local area, find out what the expectations are, find out how things are treated. Oftentimes when you come up to higher level committees, there may be dis questions that come up. Is this your job or is it service? Things that are outreach. When you're in an outreach type position, there doesn't mean that everything that's outreach is automatically just your job. Some things can be counted. It's important to put it in your, your narrative, the three-year narrative for selective salary. If there might be a question at a division level committee, well, is this the, the thing to do is to avoid having a question that's not addressed in your, in your written pieces. If you're going up for promotion, same place, that personal state, that's where you look to see that, well, not every place treats different aspects of service the same. So rather than trying, there is no one answer for all of this, but there are questions, and it's always an area of question. So find out first locally what goes on, and then just recognize that if you have something that might be a question by somebody outside of your department, that you've addressed it when you put these things up. That's as much as all. Okay, great. Thank you, Cardo. And uh, Lucia is walking into the building. <laughs> So she's, I love you see me looking like this. Um, yeah, uh, actually, hey Mark, could you could you do me a favor? Sure. Could you oh. hang out by the elevator? Sure. So, you know, so, thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, so um, I also wanted to just give a brief um, overview of some of the things that have gone on at the union offices here, just a, a couple of highlights, and thank people. Um, you know, we had the elections in 2018, which was a huge, wonderful. Uh, success, I think, and it was a it spoke volumes, and and we a number of us went out uh, with the red for Ed, which we went with AFT, um, in the Michigan Education Association, and we worked on different with different candidates, and um, I think we really made a difference. You know, Rashida Tlaib, I uh, was particularly proud of, um, <coughs> uh, but then um, Padma Koopa, who's flipped a bunch of people flipped districts up in Oakland County, which a uh, number of our members supported and worked and knocked doors for and I'm hoping that they will be able to come next year and speak to us um, and so they can get to know us better because we have a lot of our members in their district even though we're Wayne County we have a lot of members in Oakland County like 160 in Patrick Cooper's uh, uh, district of all so <clears throat> so um, that was pretty exciting and to see the results was exciting and Work together to fight the uh, some of the stuff in lame duck. Some of it we were successful in, and most of it we were successful in helping to push back, but not all of it. But uh, we have a governor now who's dealing with uh, some of the the legislation that was passed in December that was not pro worker, pro uh, union. Um, let's see. Um, right now, uh, we um, we've gotten through all kinds of crazy stuff with the School of Medicine. Um, and Charlie has spoken about that several times. We're still in the middle of more turmoil, uh, which um, may affect us uh, because there's um, uh, issues about money and if money was improperly taken from um, some funds from the that should have gone under the Medicaid thing. So if you read Cranes, I don't know if Charlie wants to mention anything about it. <coughs> I think I think I've sent out a I've sent out a to everybody. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. But it's pretty straightforward. This Medicaid program is designed to encourage physicians and other clinical service people to deliver services to Medicaid patients. So Medicaid reimbursement isn't as high and other third-party reimbursement. And uh, Wayne State is one of, the, uh, one of the intermediaries that is supposed to distribute these funds. And the question is, have they distributed them properly? And frankly, the excuses of the, of the Wilson administration on this, I find lacking. They need to come forward and tell us where the funds came from, where they went, what their legal rationales are, 
right now they are not telling anybody where the funds are <coughs> or where they went or any of this. It's all, but of course it's, it's also subject to a, uh, to a suit that has to do with the bankruptcy of the faculty practice kind of in the medical school. So <coughs> things are gradually going to come out. Uh, the facts are stubborn things and they will come out, and I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure how well the administration will fare when they finally do come out. Right. So what it means to the main campus, uh, it has... Campus is subsidizing the medical... Yeah, we are subsidizing them. As it has for the last number of years. Right, so if you're wondering why raises is not more money for equity adjustments or lines or hiring more people, it's because a lot of that money is being sent over to the School of Medicine, um, and uh, and it's it, that that continues those issues continue to turn and if the university here is liable for money that they took or adjusted from the Medicaid money and put who, who knows where if they if that was improper and they are being sued right now if they have to pay it out it will be tens of millions of dollars and that's a concern <coughs> for how it affects the entire university um, so. Uh, as far as the, what's happening in Lansing with the budget, we are expecting not to, not to have clear answers right away. In the past, we had a Republican governor, Republican legislature, so it went pretty quick, um, not always to our, to our detriment. We got very low increases in tuition. Gretchen Whitmer is proposing that across the board, 3% increase for all 15 universities, so not more to Grand Valley, less to us. Um, so that's another part, but it's going to be a big fight. Um, because the Republicans are opposing, it's just because it's uh, Republican and Democrat. So we don't expect that they're going to have, we're going to be clear on that budget until the last minute. Um, and anyway, th I just want to make one last pitch for you to consider um, running um, for the, uh, putting your name in the hat for uh, the Academic Staff Steering Committee. It's an opportunity to put your touch and your focus. You can do similar workshops. You could, if you want to do new ones, uh, you have ideas of what we could do. Uh, the, you know, in, in these forums, you can have uh, a say on that. Uh, if you don't like the food, if you want to try something else, you order the food. You can go to someplace new, see, you know, that kind of stuff. Then it gives you a chance to meet people across campus. Also, an opportunity to do some meaningful service that will look good on your um, on your professional record. So. Lakia, how are you? Do you have a minute to take a breath? I'm breathing. You're breathing? <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too hard for you. Okay. That's good. All right. So the, here's Lakia Wilson. Are you ready? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. You're a teacher, so you're always ready, right? Yes, always. Okay. Lakia Wilson is, um, as mentioned before, the uh, Executive Vice President yes. of the Detroit Federation of Teachers, our so a sister local career, we because we're also um, a the American Federation of Teachers. Um, it's a time for our unions, who are so close to each other, to connect. And um, so we wanted to do things to support your local and you learn about us. And so if we go on strike, you guys come. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we love <laughs> concerned about that. <laughs> but also to learn more about what you're dealing with at DPS and what you, or DPSCD, and what you need. So um, thank Absolutely. you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank and you welcome to uh, our academic staff. Yeah. Thank you for having me, first and foremost. Um, just a little bit of, about me. Um, I've been with Detroit Public School my entire um, career. Um, 23 years this November. I started as a first grade teacher, taught first grade for five years, went back on my master's, because you know teachers don't make no money. <laughs> went back on my master's in counseling, became a school counselor. Um, so I have been in this position since January. And um, I, they are getting butter from the duck. I'm, I'm, I'm earning every dollar that I make. This is a tough job. I don't think anything um, in my teaching and counseling career could have paid me to deal with um, the issues that I see presented in the schools amongst administration and teachers, teachers and teachers, children. And teachers. So just a little bit on the state of um, Detroit Federation of Teachers. Um, I do bring you greetings on behalf of President Terrence Martin. I'm Executive Vice President Lakia Wilson. We are an office of two. <laughs> Thanks to Right to Work. Um, Detroit Federation of Teachers had a huge um, staff in terms of um, 
full-time president, full-time executive vice president, a dues clerk, um, secretaries, um, three to four to five to six labor relations reps. That was back when we had almost 12,000 employees. So now we're roughly about 4,000 teachers in let's just say we're a little over half membership. So just kind of feel that. So what that means is that we've had to reduce staff greatly. And even though we've reduced staff, DFT, the district, has not reduced in administration. And so this is um, something that we speak to um, all the time. In, in terms of negotiations. Um, we are currently in negotiations. This is a third year wage reopener for us. Um, hot on the, out in the atmosphere right now is our calendar because it was approved by the school board but not approved by us. So um, we have a lot going on, but I will say that we're moving in the right direction. Um, President Martin has come up with um, <coughs> something called organizing fellows. That's Charlie. Just right. so, so, so I'm not sure if you all know or, or remember that um, DFT had um, an administratorship with AFT. Do you all remember that? A few years back. Say it again? That DFT was under um, trusteeship or administratorship with AFT. Do you all remember that? Yep. And so we had organizers um, within our district that came in and made sure that when Right to Work went through that all of our folks signed up. And so, but they're gone. So who does that work? Um, and so we had a few folks that were doing it. And so what we've done is we've hired, with some help, um, two organizing fellows that are DFT, DPSCD teachers, right out of the classroom. People who have um, been active with the union, um, active in terms of coming to AFT events, DFT events, organize it in their own building. So we created a job spec, we put it out there, people applied, we had an interview, a lengthy interview process, in person, telephone, we even had an AFT national person come in, and we hired these two organizers. So within one month's time, we have brought in 100 new members. So we are really doing well. We are really excited that, yes, I think it's the first time. Um, recognizing that we have a lot of work to do, a lot of ground to cover, because DPSCD does not have um, what you would consider a regular onboarding process. So we don't know when new people come into the district. We really don't know when people leave the district. And so we have to rely on building representatives, um, people who will say, I will represent this building um, at, at the union. Uh, level in union meetings, but not every building has a building rep. So then you lose people because we just don't know who's coming and going and when they come and when they go. But these organizing fellows, they are working in schools, and we think that part of the success of this program is due to the fact that they are teachers. They're colleagues. People know them. They know their faces. And um, I think people respect that, and people want to sign up. Another thing, and I'm sure you're all seeing this, is that we have, we have become, um, I'm going to say GMAC. Do you all remember when you would have a car note and GMAC had to call you? They had to call me a couple. I was a teacher, y'all, so GMAC <laughs> had to call me for my car note. But it has reduced the union to being bill collectors. Can I say one thing? Yes. <clears throat> there was a law passed that said that the teachers cannot have dues come out of the paychecks. They have to go and physically collect dues from the members in creative ways, but they cannot have it as a deduction from their paychecks anymore. The legislature did that to attack the teachers' union, honestly. Yeah. So that was part of right to work, which had nothing to do with right to work. It was yeah. you can opt out of the union and your dues can no longer be payroll deducted. That was basically it. So what that means is that you and I have to manage our own dues. Well, some people pay, do, pay their bills swell and others don't. 
and then sometimes life happens. So if you opt into the union and you use your debit card and your debit card expires or the bank feels as if their system was compromised, they may just arbitrarily send you a new card. But if you don't update all your bills, then DFT falls off. And so it has been um, a nightmare trying to keep up with whose bills are on, whose bills are off, and um, it really takes away time from what we really should be doing, which is having those face-to-face -face conversations and um, building strengths with numbers. Um, working with our school district with policies and I'm coming here from um, a meeting with a teacher who unfortunately had some situations where she was drinking and driving. Um, this was her third offense and so um, she was being terminated. So these are just some of the things that, that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm not sure if you all watch Real Sports. I was on Real Sports. <laughs> Um, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 10 o'clock, I was on Real Sports, and I did an interview regarding Little Caesars Arena. And, um, you know, we got millions and gazillions of dollars to give away, but DPS buildings are still in bad shape. <coughs> Dr. McVitie will be the first to say that we probably need almost a billion dollars in repairs across the district. And so we know that that number is um, crazy to say the least. Um, so our, our buildings, um, many of them have um, no air. I would say there are about 60 out of 109 schools that do not have air conditioning. Uh, many of them do not have windows or windows that open. And so we have to stop educating because it's too hot or it's too cold um, or plumbing. And we just know because we have our own homes and they are in constant need of repair. So um, the district is always, we like to say, on fire. There's always a fire somewhere. Like you put out a fire, another one jumps off. And um, we're doing the best that we can. <coughs> a two-man, one-man show. Um, we do have a labor relations rep who retired, and she came back. And that is great. She works four days a week. We do have an office assistant who's retired and who has come back to work two days a week. And this is what we can afford. And we're doing, um, I would say, a bang-up job <laughs> with our limited resources. But we're educators, and we know how to do more with less. But it's time off and time out for trading our livelihoods because we choose to work with children or we choose to work with young people. Just because I want to work with young people does not mean that I choose to stay poor. That's, that's not a trade-off. And so um, as we fight to get back what was taken from us, um, that 10% that was taken, and that was more than 10 years ago, um, we're, 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 in, we're going in, in, a, in a good direction. I think that we are moving forward. We're trying to move our local forward. Um, building leaders, building power, um, and, and I just thank all of you and Michelle for the, the service project that you want to do. Our children are still in need. So even though this area looks great, not just Wayne State, but we're talking about uh, the medical center, what I know to be the medical center, what they've now named Midtown. So even though this looks great, we still have children that need um, markers dry erase markers, um, pencils, and as curriculum and instruction change, then supplies change. So when I was asking teachers what did they need, everyone kept saying headphones. Why do they need headphones? Well, the students do um, an individualized assessment called iReady, and they are responsible for doing 45 minutes of iReady in math and 45 minutes of iReady in language arts but it's on a computer and they have to listen with headphones and the headphones break all the time so they never have enough headphones so um, I just thank you all for your service project I've emailed uh, the latest list mm -hmm. Nora. hi Nora I emailed the list I hope you got it um, and I'll text it to you as well but um, we have plenty of needs and I just thank you all for um, wanting to give back to our students do you have time for questions? Or sure. Anybody have questions? Or? 
Like you want like smaller ones or just any size zipper pencil? You know the, the the zipper pencil case that has the three holes that can kind of fit like in a binder. Oh, it goes in the binder. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I have one like Yeah. So for headphones, are earbud headphones okay or do you want ones that aren't don't go in the ear for hygiene purposes? Yeah. Okay. Um, I like to say that the sign up sheet is somewhere in your title or at the end of the table. So if you're gonna do it for your unit in your department, I do need your information so we can be in contact when I do want to pick up that boxes or you have having trouble dropping off your box. So please sign up, write your name as much as possible from your information so I can get started. And then I'll collect the huge. Just, when is your contract up? I know you got to wait for your opener, but next next year, next June. So we go full blown. Everything's on the table next, next year. June. Next year. So okay. this is just wages, just wages and the calendar. Yeah, next so. June will be coming up. Yeah. Did you lose they a lot of the members due to right to work? Did you lose? Did Michigan now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like half. Yes. Yes. Half the members. Half. What are the, and what some are the, of it? Some of some of the reason why we have such a large number of folks that are not members is not because they chose not to be members. They really did sign up. But with the um, accounting system that we use, it depends on the time of the debit. So with my bank, I, I bank outside of uh, Michigan First. Most of our employees bank with Michigan First because it used to be Detroit Teachers Credit Union. So most people bank there. And our checks are deposited like around 9 a.m. I don't bank there. I bank at PNC. So my money is there at midnight. Bill Highway um, does the debit at like 2.39 a.m. So if your money isn't there, you are already low, and you don't have th that, that amount, then your account, your, your debit is declined. That one decline shuts your account off so that you won't be uh, assessed any uh, $29 or $39 bounce check fees. Or You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But now you're out of benefit. You're, you're not paying dues anymore. And if you don't call right away, and most people don't check their emails, um, so that's part of the reason. So it's not that people don't want to be in the union. It's just technical. It's, it's, yeah, it's a technical. Exactly. It's exactly why they did it. Yeah. And that's exactly, exactly why they, why they, they wanted to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. yes. What are the grades covered in the Lee and Burton? Um, they are both K-8 buildings. Yeah. Okay. If people yeah. wanted to volunteer more than just give it, they wanted to connect with the building reps or do something in those schools. That would be great. Um, the district has a new, um, because you know we have new leadership, we have new superintendent, new school board, and so they've come up with all these fabulous policies. And so to volunteer, um, they have this volunteer form, there's a volunteer badge, and um, no volunteers that have felonies. So here we back with this felony situation, which hurts us because our parents have felonies. They can't go into the school? They can't go into school. You may not go be able to go on your child's field trip because you have a family. So um, we got some stuff that we gotta fight and and work yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. So yes. Question for the donations. You take um, gift cards. We can buy them. If you uh, if you give us uh, if you can give <laughs> the gift cards, I'll go out and buy the stuff. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Lakia uh, takes gift cards, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I, I would have to say no because I don't want to end up on the news like some of our other yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know, you, you just want to, wanna, you know, on the side, say, I always thought that that young lady was cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to just give me a gift card, bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. But, I mean, but if you're collecting and people want to donate money. I mean, I... Oh, yeah. I never say no to money. It's yeah. financial aid, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if that is the case, if it's a check or something or money, give to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can, I'll make sure, and Nora and I can go on a shopping trip. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm not...
and can I speak about a thing? Yeah, speak okay. about a thing. Um, about teacher education, I, I don't know if you sent the email or I got an email from somewhere about teacher education programs okay. and that if anybody was interested, uh -huh. um, they had a bachelor's from another field, but they wanted to become a teacher. Oh, so if they want to become a teacher? Did someone send me that? Did you send me that? I don't know. I don't okay. stuff. I someone sent me that. We got to do a better job of replacing ourselves. Um, my mom was a teacher and I was her cavalry. I replaced her. There's really no one in the pipeline to replace all of us. Once, as we move out with the district, with our district, we have about 1,600 <coughs> employees that are on the max step. And I would dare to say most of those people have 20 plus, almost 30 years. So if 2,000 folks just decide, I'm out of here, there's not enough to come and replace us. Um, and so we got to do some creative stuff in legislation as well to start attracting people back into the field of, of education. Um, we got to do some creative stuff in elementary school, middle school, <coughs> high school, so the kids start thinking about education and not just coding and not just robotics. Because that's, they are recruiting. Those fields are actively recruiting. We're not. And part of that is because of morale, right? But we got to start replacing ourselves. Um, because we're, we're all feeling the, the crunch of vacancies. Um, and I say this all the time at the negotiating table, Detroit Public Schools really has become um, the MESC office. I think I'm telling my age. Do you all remember the MESC office? It's the unemployment office. It was the back of the day unemployment office. They don't have MESC offices anymore. But um, it was the unemployment office. And so when other districts are hiring, they come right to DPS. And they plug all of our brightest and best folks that we spent, the, the district has spent millions of dollars training, professionally developing. So um, we, we really have to do a better job of recruiting, getting people, young people interested in education, in leadership, people who want to be in leadership um, because they want to be thought leaders and not just because they want to raise, because we got a lot of that. But they so, don't want to be poor. They don't want to be poor. <laughs> Yeah, so if I want to make some more money, I'll be a principal. Do I really want to be a principal? No. Am I going to be a thought leader? No. Am I going to be hell on wheels? Yes. <laughs> so, these are the things that we're dealing with. So, but I'm here, and if you have any questions, I could stay till 4 o'clock till our membership. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, there are um, evaluations, and also if anyone want to be um, on the committee for next year, the nomination form is also in the packet that you picked up.